She's been reporting on the Supreme Court for nearly five decades, breaking some of the biggest stories of the era. Nina Totenberg is in conversation with correspondent Nancy Cordes. When the lively hour of argument was over, all the justices except Clarence Thomas had asked many questions. Nina Totenberg's lifelong search for facts began with fiction and her admiration for an intrepid teenage amateur detective. I wanted to be like Nancy Drew, and that meant I wanted to be something of a sleuth. Nina has been on the case ever since, first as a print reporter, and now for nearly 50 years as legal affairs correspondent for National Public Radio, where she's known for her scoops. Publicly, some Republican senators are standing by the nominee. It was her reporting that caused the 1987 Supreme Court nomination of Douglas Ginsburg to go up in smoke. What I found was that he was a regular smoker of marijuana. He was sunk. He was sunk. In her new memoir, published by Simon & Schuster, part of CBS parent company Paramount Global, Nina Totenberg writes that growing up in the 1950s, this kind of sleuthing was not necessarily in the cards. I think my mother thought that I would be someone's administrative assistant like she had been, and that was the best I would be able to do. Her father, the great concert violinist Roman Totenberg, thought differently. Because he played with women musicians, he never suggested to me, oh, you can't do that because you're a woman. She found she was the only woman in most newsrooms until she arrived at NPR in 1975. Women were everywhere at NPR doing all kinds of things and in, even in administrative positions because we paid so little, no man would take the job. She became fast friends with All Things Considered co-host Susan Stamberg and reporters Linda Wertheimer and Koki Roberts. Today, they're known as NPR's founding mothers. But back then, their cluster of cubicles was dubbed the fallopian jungle. I took it with a grain of salt at a kind of a compliment because the jungle, you wouldn't dare go in there, right? Right? <laughs> I'd be afraid. Yeah, so that's fine. Don't screw with me. One of her biggest scoops came in 1991 when she uncovered something explosive Judge. during confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Jeremy. Clarence Thomas. I found out that there was a woman named Anita Hill who had accused then Judge Thomas of sexual harassment when she worked for him. Anita Hill agreed to speak to her. The relationship, she said, became even more strained when Thomas, in work situations, began to discuss sex. So help you God. I do. And I then Hill spoke to Congress. He talked about pornographic material. Republicans were furious and penis. took aim at Totenberg. You've been beating the drum on this one almost every day since it started. I do not appreciate being blamed just because I do my job and report the news. Listeners got to know her voice and her face, which ended up plastered all over the ultimate NPR status symbol. Can we talk about the Nina Totenberg tote bag? The tote bag? I was initially very suspicious about it, but I, I love this. It makes me look great. Nina also had a knack for befriending Supreme Court justices long before they were named to the court. I first knew Scalia when he was in the Nixon administration, and the same was true for Chief Justice Rehnquist. Her most famous friendship with the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg began 21 years before Ginsburg was nominated, when she was still a law professor at Rutgers University. I was reading a brief of hers. There's a whole bunch in the brief that I didn't understand. Her telephone number was there, and I called her up, and I got an hour-long lecture. That led to more calls and dinners where they talked about music and theater and fashion. They gossiped and they leaned on each other as they both cared for dying husbands. Ruth was married to Marty Ginsburg for 56 years, Nina to Senator Floyd Haskell for 19 years. She knew you weren't looking at her as a source. She knew you were looking at her as a friend. If you have a Supreme Court justice friend, you don't ask about their work. Otherwise, they won't be your friend. 
After Haskell's death, Nina met a widower, Dr. David Rines, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg married them in 2000. I wasn't too worried about it, so we told my mother. And I said, not a rabbi, we got a judge. She said, a judge? I said, but she's Jewish. I don't care. It's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I don't care. She's not a rabbi. Rines could cook, which meant even more dinners with RBG, who always requested the bouillabaisse. She would eat chicken, but her favorite was seafood. And in her last years of life, that last year, we cooked for her 23 consecutive Saturdays. Nina's book is titled Dinners with Ruth. In it, she describes how Ruth and Dr. Rines would sneak away to discuss Ruth's medical challenges, including lung cancer, leaving Nina in the dark. And I couldn't say anything. So for six weeks, I lied to her, basically. <laughs> Why did you feel like you had to lie? A, it was a HIPAA violation, and B, I didn't want any, any leak. Do you have any regrets? I, I do think that I was born on, under a very bright star. Nina interviewed RBG in public dozens of times. Their last private conversation was by phone a few days before Ruth died two years ago this month. I said to her, you are my darling friend, and I'm just, it's been one of the great parts of my life that you've been my friend. It turns out that the hard-hitting Nina Totenberg may not be as tough as she would have her sources believe. I think I learned a lot from my friends to be a more generous person, how to be a better friend. I think they taught me to be a better person.